We look forward to worshiping the Lord today. Amen. Praise the Lord. Glad to be with you today coming in on the video with us. We're going to sing. We're going to sing happy birthday to some folks first, and then we're going to worship the Lord. Praise God. She's the much younger one. <laughs> Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday, God bless you. Happy birthday to you. Amen. Many more. Many more. Now we get to say real hard with oh. <laughs> Thank you. 
Thank you. 
Thank you all so much. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord, that you're here in this place. And you deserve the praise for being here, Lord. You deserve the honor and the glory. I didn't know of any specials today. It did. Please let me know that I wasn't aware of any. We're going to transition toward a time of communion today. For those who are watching out there, we just pray that you just let's commune with the Lord in our hearts today. And just have a solemn time, a time just to think about how good He is to us. And even if you might not have the, the cracker and the juice with you, He's still there with you. Amen. Just keep, keep hanging in there and keep giving Him the honor for what He's done for us. So we're going to have our ushers come forward today that were for the communion today. This was something on my heart and it was laid out there and I want to be obedient. If y'all just hang loose up here for just a second. Yeah, thank you, Aaron. This is on my heart as we were praying today for our kids. And I know our kids in this church go through a lot. And for what reason he, the Lord placed it there, I don't know. But could you just join me? If you're near a kid, could you put your hand on them or stretch your hand? Father, we just pray for our kids today. Lord, I know as they're in school, they're going through a lot. It's, a, it's been a, a time for them, Father. And there's all kinds of temptations and trials and troubles. We just ask that in every one of them, dear God, you show yourself to be strong in our kids, dear God, in Jesus' name. That, Lord, as they're raised up, dear God, in the ways of the Lord, they won't depart on their own. Minister to the kids in this church, we pray, dear God, so that they might be for your glory, not just in the future, but today. That today you're going to use these guys for all the plan you have. And those that are not here with us today that are among our number, help them, Lord. Strengthen them day by day, one day at a time, dear God, with the call you have on their lives. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. I can ask our ladies here up front. We're going to serve you the elements today. And if y'all y'all can just serve whenever you're ready to. All are welcome to participate. That know the Lord Jesus, not to be a member of the church, anything like that. We just invite whosoever will, even the kids are invited to participate. So. God bless you as you serve. Can you put up that verse, Keenan, that uh, we had in Luke? This is a guy that was talking to Jesus, and Jesus basically goes along with him and later in this passage. It says, Now one of those who sat at the table with him heard these things. He said to him, Blessed is he who should eat bread in the kingdom of God. We believe in what's called the marriage supper of the Lamb. Can you just imagine that? Being at a big table all around with his saints, and the good things that will be there for us. And most of all, at the head of the table, there's Jesus. There's our Lord and our Savior. They're eating with us. My point is, we've got a lot to look forward to. We have a whole lot of good things ahead for us. And what we're doing today, among many other things, is we're looking forward to that. With this little cracker and this little juice, we celebrate something bigger that's coming really soon. We're going to eat with Jesus. Oh, we're going to eat with the King of Kings. He's invited you today. He's invited all of us today. And so I just encourage us, this is a time to, yes, to reflect on it, but to be happy. Be happy. Jesus is coming soon for us, and he's got good stuff waiting. So we want to read the, the normal verses that we read to us for communion as well. And those are in the, the overhead too for us. Just going down through the list. It's in 1 Corinthians chapter 11 and verse 23. For I received from the Lord that which I also delivered to you, that the Lord Jesus, on the same night in which he was betrayed, took bread. In verse 24. And when he had given thanks, he said this. He broke it and said, Take heed, this is my body, which is broken for you. Thank you. Do this in remembrance of me. And in the same manner, he also took the cup after supper, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood. This do as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. For as often as you eat this bread and drink this cup, you proclaim the Lord's death till he comes. Therefore, whoever eats of this bread and drinks of this cup of the Lord in an unworthy manner will be guilty of the body and blood of the Lord. In verse 29, for he who in, in verse 28, excuse me, but let a man examine himself, and so let him eat of the bread and drink of the cup. 
Amen. Was everybody served that needed to be served today? Thank you, ladies, so much. Thank you, ladies, so much. As we've said already, the cracker we're about to partake, it's a little smaller than we've been having, but it's a symbol. It's a symbol of the body of Jesus. And we understand from the scriptures and read there that his body was beaten, it was broken, it was abused. The bones weren't broken, but he was, he was beaten for us so that we might have victory in life over sin, over all those things that would drag us down, would bring us low. He went down there for us and brought us out. And I'm thankful today for the body of Jesus. So as we eat this today, let's think about what he did for us on the cross. How much pain he took for us. And how much good he has for us on the other side of this life. In heaven. So we're going to pray for this. And after we pray, then we'll go ahead and eat together. And the crowd. So I could invite today for us. Sister Linda, would you pray for us, please? Appreciate the promises of God that she shared. And we agree today with Sister Linda. Father God, thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord, send us your son. Lord Jesus, thank you enough that you loved us to be obedient, even unto the cross of God. That you shed your blood for the forgiveness of our sins, that we could be made the righteousness of God. That you could bridge the gap between God and us because we needed a Savior. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus, that you set the example. You loved us even our together. And Lord, I pray that this would just encourage us and give us strength, oh God, to walk in your ways, to search your scriptures, and to learn, oh God, what your heart is all about. Jesus, I pray this in your name. Amen. Amen. Let's eat together. taking of now is the cup. This cup of juice is a symbol of the blood of Jesus. You might remember back to when you were a child and got a cut on your hand and saw some blood. It was a scary thing, wasn't it? Pretty scary. But think about what Jesus did. He didn't have just a little blood. He shed, he shed a lot of blood for us, for our sins, to cover them up. If anybody today needs to give that over, anything over, what a good time to do it. Father, we do any of us, dear God, or anybody watching that needs to make it right, dear God, the blood of Jesus is still powerful. And we just pray that they do. That the blood will cover each one we pray. And Sister Donna, would you also pray as we get ready? Dear Heavenly Father, we come to you today to keep the praise and glory and honor. And we thank you, dear Lord, that we can come together, meet together, and do this as a symbol of, of you, dear Lord. Yes, so many people, people can't. And we praise your name for that. And we praise your name for the blood you shed on the cross for us, dear Lord. You didn't have to. You chose to, to give us an everlasting life, dear Lord. And we thank you and praise your name. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Let's drink together. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. As we have Kelly collecting the cups, could everybody stand in the house that has the ability to today? Could you stand in the house? My encouragement to you, could you just tell the Lord with an uplifted hand you love Him. Lord, we love you today. We love you today, Jesus, for all you've done for us. We just want to praise you, Jesus, for the blood and the body that you shed for us, that were given for us, dear God, all for your glory, Lord, so that we might glorify you now, dear God. We just thank you, Lord. Lord, have your way. Have, take our lives, dear God, when we get ready to leave this place, dear God, that it all be for your glory. We love you, Lord. We love you, Lord. We bless you. Worthy is the Lamb. Worthy is the perfect, spotless Lamb to die for us. Thank you, Thank you, Lord. In Jesus' name. Amen. 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 You can be seated if you like. Thank you, everybody. Praise the Lord. We're going to go ahead now and receive your tithes and offerings if you had those. So we can call our ushers. If you don't, please don't worry about it. But if you do, we need an opportunity for that. 
Thank you, gentlemen. Give to Jesus and trust Him to provide. Sometimes we give and it's hard to. But even though it's hard as we give, God sees that. Even if it's a small amount, the Bible says, He sees that and He honors it. Amen. Brother Woody, would you mind to pray for us as we receive? Lord, we just thank You for this morning, Lord, and Your presence here this morning. Thank you, Lord. Lord, at this time we take out, Lord, to just share what we have, Lord, that You've given us already, Lord, and we give it back to You. Trust in You to provide for our every need, Lord. We just thank you for those, and we bless those who have to give and those who have not as well, Lord. These things we ask in your precious name. Amen. Amen. God bless you as you give today. Praise the Lord. I'm glad everybody's here with us today. Uh, we did have some announcements. Um, we're about to draft our kids back. Brother Woody, do you mind if I draft you to come up here real quick? Well, actually, not real quick. <laughs> <laughs> I did want to have, we have everybody that's currently on our insurance to drive the bus, uh, and I'd like to ask our bus drivers if we could meet briefly after the service today. I wanted to go over just some things we talked about, and anybody else that's interested, it's not, it doesn't matter, it should be five minutes. Is this a panel then? Oh, no, it's for projector. Oh, projector. Yeah, if you want to do a special, brother. No, 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 no. You can just step right up and go ahead if you want to. I didn't I was actually for the, I was drafting you for the projector. So, uh, but yeah. so let's meet with our bus folks today. As we said, we do remind everybody Saturday is the tobacco festival. Uh, we um, have the booth and we have the bus. We just got her. She worked on the, the banners for Sister Elena. Did appreciate that. They look nice. Look nice, and they're going to be good on the bus. We look forward to just a, a good time. Just. Uh, for those that want to ride with her, please do. And for some that might want to help out with the booth, please do. Or if you want to try to do a little bit of both, please do. And it'll be awesome. If you can't even do that, you just want to come around and see us. We'll be by the bb and Bank in Russellville. Uh, right at that, there's a little brick walkway there. We'll be right there, kind of in the middle of it, just like we have been. So come by and see us. And, and, and I've got somebody who's doing the video today. He's got something he's going to get ready for us, too. Oh, yes. Ricky's I'm got ready. something ready for us. So he's going to do some things to kind of draw the folks in some tricks for us. So we're excited about the tobacco festival. And is there, and I, I, for, did you have anything you wanted to add in Atlanta? Or? No, other than probably just whoever's planning on riding the bus in the parade, you probably need to meet with them today just to know what time to meet and where to meet. Okay. So make sure you talk to Atlanta before you leave today about the bus. And we hope we can get a good group on the bus that can, can give your Miss America wave, right? <laughs> uh, so we did have some folks sharing up so real soon. Bob and Lanny are going to be sharing. Uh, we look forward to that coming up here soon. Uh, we mentioned before we came on the camera, uh, we weren't able to do, sadly, I hated to do it. If, for everybody, I just want to say it again. I hated to cancel. We had our late day planned today, and we really wanted to, but the weather was not permitting. But uh, we're looking maybe to schedule that again on October the 24th, which would be three weeks from today. So that's Sunday. So we would do what the same plan we had. Food, picnic food, all that. I guess the same plan we had, except just put postponing it for three weeks. Uh, October 31st, Hallelujah Day. Looking forward to that. I know Miss Mika back there has been working on that, and Sister Olam has been working on that too. And got already a bunch of candy and a bunch of games ready to go for that. So we're excited about that. We'll have that uh, after the morning service. And I did want to, Linda, if you want to, you want to come up here, you can, or if you want to stay back there, you can. But she's going to talk about the Operation Christmas Child that's coming up in a month and a half. Uh, so she's going to share. We do have a video with that. We don't have it today. We will have it probably next time, next Sunday. But we will share this. And this is an awesome program we've been a part of now for a few years. And uh, hope everybody can participate. This Operation Christmas Child is, gives a chance for everybody to get a Christmas overseas and, and abroad. Uh, kids for ages 2 to 4. 5 to 9 and 10 to 14, take your choice, boy or girl. Certain things that you can use to, to fill it with is, is hairbrushes, jump ropes, toys, calculators, uh, 
a wow gift, like maybe a little small teddy bear, something that'll fit in a shoe box. These kids are so excited when it comes time. Give them a Christmas and give them a way to know that Jesus loves them and he cares. Amen. It comes up on the, on the week of November 15th through the 22nd, and it gives us time to choose whether we want a boy or a girl, however many, what age group, and go shopping and have fun. And, and it's just pretty exciting to be able to provide and to be used by God in this way to thrill the heart of some little kid. Amen. Amen. Thank you. Amen. 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 So I believe it's is it nine dollars a box that you give with them to yes, something yes. like that. So that for the shipping and whatnot. And um, it's a really neat program, it really is. Amen. I know Miss Mika has been busy today. She has some good stuff for the kids back there, some food. I said it's a good day for me to be a kid, I like it. she's got some good stuff. So uh, God bless the kids as they're heading back. God bless you guys. Harry Bob was one of the book of Nehemiah today. Nehemiah. It's a book you might not go to a whole lot. The Old Testament. Nehemiah chapter 6. If you want to follow along, we'll also have it on the screen. So I want to talk to us today about something that really is important for us. We preached a message, I believe a couple weeks ago, called Yes. And we serve a God who is the God of yes. Amen? He gives yes. us the yes. He gives us the go ahead. Linda preached, shared last Sunday about several of the promises that are yes. A lot of good stuff. We still have those if anybody needs a copy of them. It's good stuff. Or you want to check it back out on the internet. But I tell you what, God is also a God sometimes. He gives us the power to say no. Can you say it with me today? Because it's hard to say sometimes no. No, sometimes God has called us to be people that stand up against some of the things that go on. And so that's what we call this today, no, or, or if you will, no to say no. K-N-O-W, no to say no. And so this guy named Nehemiah, he, we talked about him before, he was a great leader. And he, he, what his thing is, he built Jerusalem's wall. And the way he was able to build it, one of the big ways he did was by telling people over and over again, no, no. And so Nehemiah 6, we want to look at that and see how that can apply to us. Because in this day, oh, it's, we, we're in a world right now that, you know, they know, it's sometimes easier to say yes than no. You know that? Sometimes it is. And we, we say yes to some things that maybe we shouldn't. But God has called us in this time and this day to take a stand against those things that are not right. It's just easy sometimes to go with the flow. But I believe Titus 2.12, I don't have it up there, but if you look at it, it says something like this. He gives us the ability, Jesus and his blood that we just celebrated, what he did on the cross gives us the ability to say no to anything ungodly, to anything that's a lust out there in the world. He helps us say no, Jesus and so we want to talk about that. What do we say no to? How do we say no? Because it isn't easy. Oh, it's easy for toddlers to say sometimes, isn't it? Yeah. You know, what's one of the first words you learn? No, no. But guess what? It's brought down kings and presidents, not mighty people, because they couldn't say no. But you know who it will hurt the most? Us, Christians, people of the faith, people who profess to know Jesus. It's going to hurt us the most if we don't say no. Amen. So let's take strong stands against the devil's pitfalls, against his traps. And so Lord, help us too with his, with his help, we can say no, whatever he's got, whatever the devil's coming against us with. So we'll start here and begin reading in this passage. So you may remember Nehemiah has been working on this wall. And so he's working on this wall, but how many of us know if we do a work, there's going to be opposition. If you're doing something good, there's going to be somebody that's going to come against you. And 6 1. Now it happened when Sandal, Tobiah, and Geshem the Arab, and the rest of our enemies heard that I rebuilt the wall, and that there were no breaks left in it, though at that time I had not hung the doors and the gates, that Sandal and Geshem sent to me, saying, Come, let us meet together among the villages in the plain of Ono. But they thought to do me harm. So I sent messengers to them, saying, I'm doing a great work, so I cannot come down. Why should I cease the work while I leave it and go down to you? 
but they sent me this message four times, and I answered them in the same manner. Father, I pray that your word resonate in our hearts today. We are dependent on you. Help us, Jesus. Help us, Lord, that it might go forward in us as we go back out into the surrounding area, dear God, that we will take a stand for you. In Jesus' name, amen. Nehemiah, in a very short time, had done a big job. He'd done a lot of work. Anybody ever just had that job you did and you were just excited? Yeah, this has been a great job. But there's just still a little bit more to go. And it's easy. It's kind of human nature, if you will, to kind of sit back, take it easy, and be like, well, I've done the big part now, and I'm going to take it easy and rest back. Um, but so how many of us know we've got to keep standing up? We've got to stay strong in what he has for us and finish the job that he has. Complete it through and don't stop. And sometimes that requires us saying no. And so the enemies of Judah had heard about these victories and had come up with a new plan. If you look at verse 3, or verse 2, excuse me, if you go there, it says the plain of Ono. Well, that was an isolated spot along the coast. It was perfect for an ambush to kill Nehemiah. And so he was, he was basically going to be, if he'd said yes to them, he was walking into a trap. And there are traps the devil has set for us too. We haven't arrived yet. And sometimes we got to keep on going. And so my first idea for us today is we say no to stopping. Amen? Even if it's a slog sometimes, it's like we're going through the mud that sits there and it, it's not easy going. But this is still the path that God has for me. Jesus has shown me the way with this. and I don't have the excitement maybe I did when I first started. Anybody have that excitement when you get started? Yay! It's something good. But... We get into that place, sometimes it's a little bit harder. It's a little bit more of a trudge that we've got to have to go forward. My encouragement to us today is, no, I'm not stopping. No, I'm not going to give up on what God has for me. Amen. And that's what Nehemiah said. I'm, I'm saying here, I'm not going to stop. I'm going to say no to this. And I'm not going to fall into this trap. Because there's all kinds of traps that we could talk about today. We've got to keep going. Keep that discipline that brought the success before and keep on going. I read the story, and we'll share this briefly. There was a boxer named Roberto Duran. You may not know that name, but he was a boxer, big famous boxer back in the day. And he was good. He had trained his whole life coming up for the big fight. The big fight was against Sugar Ray Leonard, who was another famous boxer. And um, he had trained hard, worked hard, and worked his way up. But he was so confident of victory, he didn't really train real well before this fight with Sugar Ray Leonard. And so he gets in this fight, and you can tell he's fatigued, he's tired, and Sugar Ray Leonard is beating him up and beating him up. And eventually he comes to the place in that fight where he has to utter the famous words, no moss, no moss, I'm done, it's over, I'm quitting. And those words haunt him to this day because he worked hard to build up to this, to be a boxer and a championship boxer, but he lost it there. And my point is this. Lord, help us to keep on going with those things we have. Oh, we may have a lot of talent and a lot of good things that we have. But if we slacken up and we give up, then we're going to miss out on all the, the final victory that we have, that God has planned for us. We can't give up. Well, how do we do that? I encourage us. It's just the basics that we remind us. As we pray, keep on praying. Amen. As we serve God and pursue Him, we keep on doing that. And as we pray, one of the things we ask for is just to ask for wisdom because there's a lot of traps. Jesus said it like this, be as shrewd as a snake and as innocent as a dove. Sometimes we've got to be smart. And people, you know, Christians do some things that might not be what you call heinous sins, but they're just really dumb. You know what I'm talking about? I have. I've done some dumb things. We all do. I need the wisdom of God. And I believe that Jesus paid a price for us to have the wisdom and knowledge we need. If you don't have it today, what a good day to ask for it. The wisdom that we need to keep going and yes. do what he has for us. He has it for you. Our sister shared, I'll, I'll refer back to what she said. He has all kinds of good things for us, but we can't stop. We can't stop. And I want to encourage us too, so we don't stop. And in verse 4, the Bible tells us, we say no again and again. If you wouldn't mind to go back to verse 4, Brother William. Right there. Four times they said the same thing. And guess what Nehemiah said? Four times. Not, not going to happen. Not going to happen. He kept saying no. You know how your kids will wear you down? You know what I'm talking about? Yes. No, I'm going to do it. No, I'm going to do it. No, I'm going to do it. Oh, okay. You know how that is? 
you know, sometimes our, the enemies of our spirit can do the same thing, can't they? They can attempt to wear us down. But you know what the Word of God says? We resist the devil, and he, guess what? He flee from us. We take a stand, and we keep on standing. He will eventually flee and give up when he realizes, I'm not messing with them. They're not doing it, and he'll move on. And that's what I want to encourage us with today, that we keep saying no sometimes. We've got to have that perseverance and that, that attitude that says, no, I'm not going to do it, and I'm still not going to do it. Well, how do we do that? Daily. Sometimes, you know, it's one thing to say no dramatically, but it's another thing to one day at a time to say no to those things we need to say no to. And, and, and there's plenty of those, and we'll talk about those a little bit more in a minute, just some of the other things we say no to. But my encouragement is we need a daily contact with God. You know that? Yes, we do. Daily, every day. As you go up, as you get up in the morning, as you go down. You know, some days are harder, yes, and we don't want to beat ourselves up if we have a bad day. But I encourage us that our goal should always be that daily, daily, I'm going to walk with God. And then daily, He's going to give me strength. Because we have those good days, and then we think, yeah, I've kind of built up enough to last me for a while. You know what I'm saying? We pray enough, and we feel good, and we, I've got enough for a while now. Guess what happens? The devil kind of wears us down. Wears us down like these guys are doing here. Wear them down. But like Nehemiah, we say, nope, not going to happen. And then the next day, guess what we say? Not going to happen. Amen? No. Can you say it again with me? Right. No. 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 We say it again and again sometimes. No. In Jesus' name. All right. So we say no again and again. Let's move on. Uh, verses 10 through 12. A little more of the story here. Afterward, and this is Nehemiah 6, verse 10. Afterward, I came to the house of Shemaiah, the son of Deliah, the son of Medabal, who was a secret informer. And he said, let us meet together in the house of God within the temple. Let us close the doors of the temple for they're coming to kill you. Indeed, at night they're coming to kill you. And I said, should such a man as I flee? And who is there such as I who would go into the temple to save his life? I will not, not go in. Then I perceived that God had not sent him at all, but he pronounced his prophecy against me because Tobiah and Samuel had hired him. For this reason he was hired, that I should be afraid and act that way and sin, and they may have cause for an evil report that they might reproach me. And so I will stop right there. And we, we went through a lot of there in that story. But basically, just to sum it up, a false prophet urged Nehemiah, hey, come on with me to the temple. Let's hide out here and, and hang out because they're going to kill you if you don't. And he was trying to basically make him, make him afraid, basically cause him to hide out for a while. Um, but what was the problem with that? Well, the meeting was, we were supposed to be out in the open. You weren't supposed to meet like that in secret. And it would be a sign to the people that Nehemiah was afraid, that he was starting to get, get a little bit weary in this. So what I encourage us with, we also need to say no to fear today. Amen. That's say no to fear. Oh, it's easy to be afraid and have that spirit of fear in our lives. Because so much of fear, that spirit, again, fear can be a good thing. You know that? It can be, it can kind of pull us back uh, in, its, in its way. But most of the time, it's going to be something that's going to drag us down. You know that? It's going to be a spirit of fear, the Bible tells us. He has not given us that, he says. That's right. But power, love, and a sound mind. Yes. And so, so much of fear is based in lies. And so our mind does, just as Nehemiah does and here in other places, we fill ourselves with the truth of God's Word. Just like you're doing today, listening to the, to the Word of God. That's good. We also need to add to that the reading, taking it in, and however way we can find a way to get it, to take it. And then also, well, what else do we do? Sometimes we've got to watch what we watch. Amen? Right. Watch what we watch. Watch what we listen to. Watch what we, right. what we do. Uh, because And who we listen to. Because sometimes we listen to folks and they, they'll, like DMI has here, we just need to watch that if we can help it. But sometimes you can't help it. Sometimes we have to hear that discouragement. But I tell you what, you don't have to dwell on it. I miss my dad being here today. Hopefully, I hope he's hanging in okay. I haven't, I haven't even had a chance to ask yet. But my dad put it like this one time. He said, you can't keep a bird from dropping presents on your head, but you can keep him from building a nest there. Does that make sense? Sometimes things are going to come, but you don't have to dwell on it. You don't have to let it stay there. Shoo it off. No, I'm not going to think about that today. No, I'm not going to accept that today. Amen? Amen. No. No, it's not the fear. That's not where we live in. It's that, that spirit of fear that would drag us down. Oh, God. It's for the asking. 
He has strength for you and me. He has strength. One of the issues I had, even as a young, a lot younger, it, it was not so much a thing with person to person, but it was just hard for me to talk on the telephone. And I don't know if that makes sense or not. But some people, they talk on the telephone. <laughs> I can talk to them on the telephone and they just go on and, and that's great. But for me, I, I don't know what it was. I just couldn't, it was just hard to talk on the phone. It's like, uh, I don't know. You don't know what to say to people on the phone because it's not standing right there. And uh, I don't know how to explain that. Everybody has their own fears. Amen. What you got to do is with each one, you give them to the Lord. Re remember what he has for us. And I just had to come. Lord, you're going to have to help me to know what to say on the phone. As silly as that sounds. You know what? He did. He did, and he helped me. I had to pray for that, and I just and he would help me to know, hey, this is what I need to be be saying, and, and help me to be, just to have the responses that I needed, so I didn't sound like a total you know doofus on the phone, right? That's not what he has. He has us for good in every kind of area of our lives. Does that make sense? Think of your example that you can think of something that makes you afraid. I just challenge you. It's a good thing. It's a good time, a good day, just to give it to God and say, I don't have to. No. That didn't have to keep bringing me down, dragging me, pulling me down from what God has for me. I can do this. I can do this in Jesus' name. And so Nehemiah here, they're trying to make him you know, give in and get to fear. He says, why should I do that? I'm a child of the King of Kings and Lord of Lords. You know that? We are children of the Most High God. Yeah. And we don't have to be afraid. You know, there is a lot of fear. I don't have to explain that to us about COVID and everything else. We've seen more fear just come out and you know, show itself than, than really I could ever remember. But you know what? For us, we don't have to be afraid. Amen? We come through it. You know, I, I, I had the virus. and you know the, it, it, It's one of those things that you, know, you look at it and the fear can be almost crippling. You know, what's going to happen to me? Is this going to bring me to all the kinds of questions? But I just remind us today that Jesus has paid the price Amen. for you Yes. And for me, that we can stand up and say, no, I'm not going to be afraid of that. He is That's still right. my shepherd, and I still shall not want. Amen? Amen. Yes. So I just be reminded of that today, that we don't have to be afraid. Nehemiah wasn't afraid. And I do want to kind of, this ties in with this same example, because we also have to say no to sin. Amen? Amen. And, and we do, even as Christians, and we're, we're saints. Did you know you and I are saints? You know, we, we, the term yeah. saint is used in a certain way, but we have been paid for by the blood of Jesus. And if we know him, we are children. We're saints. Right. But we do sometimes fall short. Amen. We do sometimes sin. But God has called us and given us the ability that we can say no to that. And the repeated habitual sin is, again, what we're talking about. This would be, if Nehemiah had gone to the temple, it would have been a violation of the law since the Levites are supposed to do what he was doing and not him. But what he says here is that, no, I'm not going to do this. I'm, it says in verse 13, I'm not going to sin. I'm not going to sin. And uh, how many of us know, and we, we've been there, you know, we talked about fishing today, right? Linda was getting ready for fishing and several getting ready for fishing. Sin can be like that and try to reel us in. Did you know that? Many things can try to catch us and reel us in. And uh, we, we don't have to give in to that. It's a big no for that for us. Because God has called us to stand up to everything. Some things are legitimate. You know, I like sports. Okay? I'm just a big sports guy. I like, you know, I, I've got the football now. This is football season. you got on and on the various sports that have baseballs about ready to have their playoffs. Every, you know, there's a lot of legitimate things. A lot of people play games. A lot of people, they do um, spend all kinds of time with just different things. And a lot of it may be, be good, be fine. But how many of us know anything outside of the Lord Jesus, if it's out of its place, it's out of its place. And sometimes we've got to stop and say, yeah, I've done enough sports for the day, Nathan. I've done enough, and it's time to stop. No, no, we're not doing that anymore. It's not. It's God's time right now. You see what I'm saying? Those things, if they're out of place, they can lead to sin. And that's not what God has for us. And then how many of us know also we have uh, those things that are, that are habitual, that are sin, that it's a little easier to spot, right? You know, we could go into all kinds of things that, that it is. And there's plenty, of, there's a lot of lists in the New Testament of orgies and drunkenness and lust and all the things that you can think of that are sin, but it can reel us in. And what does God tell us to say? No. And you know what? Because of this right here, this cross, what he did for us, there's power to say no. You and I have the power to say no today. 
Victory. Whatever the devil would throw at us. You have power in Jesus' name. If you're struggling with it, he's still God. And he'll give you the strength to say no. But I do want to remind us that we have to be aware, just as Nehemiah was. And remember, um, talk about just an example here. Most everybody knows about the Holocaust, right? The Holocaust didn't start overnight. Did you know that? Hitler came to power in 1933 in Germany. But the so-called Crystal Night happened five and a half years after that. And then it was just a gradual thing. And what the Crystal Night was is they smashed all the glass in the Jewish synagogues and they, they uh, beat up a lot of Jewish people. And they did, they, but they didn't go to the killing just yet. That's considered by a lot the start of the Holocaust in 1938. And then in 1941, they really began to set up the death camps. That's three years after that. And what's my point? My point is this. Sometimes it slips in gradually. And then before you know it, you're in the most evil, vid, uh, vile things you can think of. But it didn't start that way, did it? It was from not saying no way back over here when there was a better opportunity to. Because sometimes we get caught up and it's hard to get out then. But that's not God's plan for us today, is right. it? He has given us the strength to say no. No to all that sin. Because Nehemiah did it. And we can do it too in the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. So... I remind us today that he has victory for us as we say no. It's not just all of saying no in verse 15. Verse 15 for us here in Nehemiah 6, the Bible says this. So the law was finished on the 25th day of Elul in 52 days. Now this was a massive project done in 52 days. It might seem like a law, but it was really a miracle. Right. It, it, it took just that short of amount of time to finish that wall around the whole city. So what am I saying here? If we resist and we keep resisting, keep hanging in there with the Lord, our spiritual enemies will flee. And whatever He's called us to, whatever He has for you, we're going to win. You know, we sing victory in Jesus, but is it just a song? No, it's real. Amen. It's real for you and for me today if we're willing to just keep on hanging in, keep on resisting the wrong and saying yes to the right. So as we wind this down today, say no quitting to fear to sin and say yes to Jesus. I just remind us here, you know who else had to say no? Jesus. Jesus Himself, the King of kings and Lord of lords, had to say no for us. The Bible puts it this way. He said no to the shame of the cross. To the shame of the cross, He said no. And he was willing to endure it for us so that we can be strong today and say no to whatever, he's, whatever we got for us. There's a Bible verse that says this. The world doesn't like no, but in Proverbs 27, verse 5, open rebuke is better than hidden love. Sometimes for us, He's called us to say no and go out there and do that. And with His power, we can be free to say no. And you know what? It is a freedom indeed when you and I are free to say no to whatever He has. Jesus has it for us, for you and for me today. So we want to pray for you here. For all those watching, everybody here, we want to pray because He loves I believe he wants to do some good things in us today. Father God, in the name of Jesus, I pray for everybody that's here today. There's some things that we need to say no to. And I pray that, Lord, for each one, that we not get weary and tired and give up. But that, Lord, we will say no to the lies right now. We will say no to the hopelessness right now and let you change us. And Father God, if there's any that need you as Savior today or need to make it right, dear God, they're not sure if they're right with you, I pray that you give them the, the strength to say, no, I'm not believing the lies anymore. I'm saying yes to Jesus. If you need to say yes to Jesus, what a good day to do that. Maybe you need to say yes to Jesus or something He's called you to in, his, in, in your life. And you need to say no to the fear. No to all those things. The, the, the voices that would turn us away. We need to say no to those. If that's you, we believe Jesus is here. That He'll help us accomplish every good plan. Thank you, Jesus. And we agree for everyone out there and everyone here. Is there anybody here in, in just with heads bowed and eyes closed? We just ask that Folks, I'll be looking around. Is there anybody that says, I need strength to say no to something today? Would you just lift your hand? God bless you. God bless you. I need the strength to say no. I'm not going to do that. I'm not going to believe that. I'm not going to listen to that. God bless every one of those hands. Anybody else? Father, 
Jesus, I thank you that the cross of Christ is, is every bit as powerful as it's always been. And I pray for those today that lifted their hands. They need to say no. But Lord, in the name of Jesus, you give them the strength to say it. And that Lord, it won't just be today in this house, but it'll be tomorrow and the next day and the next day. That it won't just stop here, but they'll say no to everything they need to, Lord. And they'll say yes to you. Thank you, Jesus. Sometimes we say to these, these amen, right? But I want to ask you in the house if everybody could, could you say no with me on the count of three? And maybe where you're watching, instead of amen, it's no. One, two, three. No, no, in Jesus' name. We do, dear God, and agree, dear God, to do it together for everyone that's out there and in here that's needing that today and believe for good testimonies of what you're doing, dear God. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. And we love you today, Lord, and bless you in Jesus' name. And we also believe for those that have a need in their body or their lives that we can, we can say no to what the devil tells us. It's just always going to be that way. No, we believe in the name of Jesus for a healing. We'd love to hear from you out there and just pray God's blessings for you. We'll see you again real soon. God bless you.